minute. Can we clap our hands now and give God praise for this morning? I'm grateful to God that God has allowed us to be here in this space uh, to be able to gather together again as a community uh, to make sure that we are, in fact, giving God the focus that God deserves. And so we've come to this space today uh, for this final chapel before uh, our spring break. Anybody excited about spring break? I, I am. Some of us in there don't get spring break, but we, but we are grateful to God for those of you. Please be safe as you go on spring break. As we get ready to begin this morning, we'll begin our chapel with um, our prelude uh, with Dr. Jared Beritz, baritone, and Dr. Paul Lee accompanying. King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth never. I nothing lack if I am his, and he is mine forever. Where streams of living waters flow, my ransomed soul he leadeth, and where the verdant pastures grow, with food celestial feedeth. The King of love, my shepherd, is perverse and foolish. Oft I've strayed, but yet in love he sought me, and on his shoulder gently laid, and home rejoicing brought me. In death's dark veil I fear no ill, with thee, dear Lord, beside me. Thy rod and a staff, my comfort still, thy cross before to guide me. And so through all the length of days, Thy goodness faileth never, good shepherd, good shepherd, may I sing thy praise, may I sing thy praise forever. One more time for Dr. Jared Beards and Dr. Paul Lee. Amen. I would ask that you would stand at this time with me as we read together aloud our scripture for this morning. It'll be on the screen as well as it is in our program this morning. Our scripture comes from Judges chapter 6, verses 11 through 13. Reading now from the New Living Translation. If we will all read together, let's read. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat beneath the great tree at Orpah, which belonged to Joash of the clan of Abiazer. 
Gideon, son of Joash, was threshing wheat at the bottom of a wine press to hide the grain from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, Mighty hero, the Lord is with you. Sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles our ancestors told us about? Didn't they say, the Lord brought us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to the Midianites. You may be seated in the presence of our God. I want to invite us at this time to a time of prayer. I want to ask each of us, if we will, to assume a posture of prayer, bowed heads, closed eyes, or whatever particular posture of prayer is most suitable to you. I do want to invite us at this time into a time of prayer. I was having a conversation, Dr. Preston, the other day with my godmother, and I shared with her that I don't know that I've ever seen life like it is right now, Dr. Hester. It just seems to me. Your heads are bowed, please. Your eyes are closed. Would you please join us in this time of prayer? We're going to pray. But uh, it just seemed like if it ain't one thing, it's another thing. I, I do not know all of the circumstances and the situations of our lives. I do know this. All of us are feeling it. All of the death notifications on social media. This Saturday, I'll preach a funeral for my brother-in-law's mother. This will be the fourth funeral in a row that we've had to do. It just seems like life is turbulent right now. But we want, we want to go before God in prayer. I want to ask you right now, before I pray, would you take a moment right now? to just pray, just right now, take a moment and begin to go before God in prayer. Here's what I believe. God will hear your faintest cry and God will answer by and by. Would you go before God right now? Somebody sitting here right now as you're sitting there, you say, but I don't know anything about prayer. Sometimes the most powerful prayer is Lord help. So heads are bowed, eyes are closed. No one's talking, please. I'm asking you, us, us, if we will as a community, go before God and pray. So God, there are persons sitting in this audience right now. In fact, there are persons watching us online right now and they are, in fact, bewildered by life. Some are in a state of influx, not sure what's next and what's coming. There are some who are sitting right now and they are they're standing on the brink. And then there's some, God, who things are coming toward them and they don't even see it yet. And the truth is, God, there are times when we don't feel like you are important. We, we don't think about you. And then life happens. So, God, we come today as a community to lift up our family. First, this family called Jarvis Christian University. God, we need you. Thank you so much, oh God, for the leadership that is guiding us through the reaffirmation of our SACS accreditation, thank you so much for that. But likewise, God, we thank you so much for every student that's here. I try to remember what it was like to be a student, but that was nearly 35 years ago. I'm not so sure that I can completely relate. But here's the truth, God, you know. In fact, you know each of us individually. You know each of us collectively. And you know what's going on in our individual lives. And here's the truth, God. Behind every smile is not always joy. Sometimes people are smiling on the outside while hurting on the inside. 
And so, God, we take this time today as they are praying. We t I take this time now to lift all of us up. I'm praying, oh God, that you will be a very present help in the time of trouble. Praying, oh God, that you will be peace that passes all understanding. Praying, oh God, that we will be able to declare and see that all is well and all will be well. This now, this morning is our prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus. And everybody who agreed said, amen. At this time, our choir is going to come uh, to, to render a musical selection, after which I would that we would give our attention to our provost and assistant vice president of academic affairs, Dr. Cynthia Hester, as she comes as soon as the choir concludes. The words we will be singing are in Greek, so I will translate. Kyrie eleison means Lord have mercy. Christe eleison means Christ have mercy. So we're singing Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Good morning. Good morning. As, as mentioned, my name is Cynthia Hester, and I serve as your provost and vice president for academic affairs. And as we are preparing for this spring break and preparing for our reaffirmation for SACS, it is important that all of us understand what QEP means. That is our quality enhancement plan. So if you will take a moment, everyone should have a program. Ms. Rosa, if you don't mind coming up, and Dr. I mean Mr. Lewis and Mr. Talley. 
there is inside of your program a sheet that is in Spanish on one side and English on the other side. And so we're going to have a lot of activities when, upon your return uh, from spring break where we will be getting more involved with our QEP topic. The topic is, if you look in your program, what is the topic? You can repeat after me. Career readiness. See it, believe it, achieve it. Okay, now Rosa is going to take it and say it in Spanish for me and all the Spanish speaking students, if you will also repeat after her. El, um, el tema de, del plan de mejora de calidad es preparación profesional. El lema es véalo, créalo, logrelo. Si lo pueden repetir, véalo, créalo, logralo. That was kind of low. I couldn't hardly hear y'all. Let's try it again, and then the English, we'll do it again, okay? In Spanish. Vamos a tratarlo otra vez, más fuerte, lo pueden hacer mejor. Créalo. Créalo. No los escucho. Créalo. Créalo. Véalo. Créalo. Logrelo. Okay, in English, career readiness. Career readiness. See, it. See it. Believe it. Believe it. Achieve it. Achieve. Now y'all beat me. Okay, your turn. <laughs> One more time. Okay, vamos a hacerlo otra vez más fuerte. Uh, preparación profesional. Créalo. Créalo. No, perdón, es véalo. Créalo. 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 Logrelo. Logrelo. Career readiness. Career See. Ready. See it. See it. Believe it. Believe it. Achieve, it. Achieve it. All right, get yourselves a real round of applause there. All right. So now one of the things that we have to understand, career readiness basically means that we are preparing you to transition from the classroom to the world of work. And in order for us to do that, we have to prepare you in certain areas. Academics, we prepare you in the class for you to actually learn the subject matter. But if you don't have soft skills that companies are looking for, like how to appropriately, you know, which fork do you use when you actually go out to dinner? What do you wear? How's my time management looking? Can I actually work in a team? Okay, so all of these soft skills are what we're going to be addressing. So I need five volunteers from the student body. I need Mr. Jarvis, Ms. Jarvis. Yeah, I'm not volunteering you anymore. Okay, and Jennifer. Would you get me two students that are Spanish? Okay, necesitamos dos estudiantes que participen en una actividad um, de habla hispana. Juan y César. Ah, come on, come on. Quickly, quickly. That's just one. Where's the other one? All right, and I need one young lady. Y una joven. One young lady. Azul. Come on. Azul. All right. All right, give her a hand as she comes, y'all. Come on, all right. Okay. These two students serve on the QEP, Jennifer and uh, J uh, Mr. Law, okay, on the QEP co committee. But what we're going to do is I need just quickly uh, Dr. Robinson, Dr. Richardson, gentlemen, my preachers, Dr. Lathan, Mr. Kalula, Quickly, quickly, go in front of one of the students, and I'm going to show you something. And you're going to participate also, because you're going to shake hands with the person that is right next to you. Everybody stand quickly. I want to show you something. Everybody stand quickly. All right. I want you to act as if. Repeat after me, Miss. Uh, act as if. 
Quiero que actúen como si. You are. Ustedes. At a reception. Están en una recepción. Meeting the president. Reuniéndose con el presidente. Of a major. De una. Company. Compañía. Like IBM. Importante como IBM. And I want you to introduce yourself. Y quiero que se presenten. To the president of that company. Al presidente de esa compañía. So one of you will be the president and one of you will be the student and I want you to introduce yourself. And these gentlemen and ladies of the university are the president. Start. Uh, go. All right. Okay, now stop. Stop. Ahora paren. Everyone, everyone stop. Todos stop. Paren. Now, I saw some of you do this. Vi que unos... No, no, no. Hicieron okay. Eso. Así I saw saludo. some of you do this. No, no, no. Okay. Now, if you did this and you looked me in the eyes, si esto okay, y me los ojos, I might hire you. Tal okay. vez te contrate. But I won't hire you Pero no te voy a contratar. If you did this. Si haces esto. Okay? So, that's just the tip of the iceberg. So everybody, Eso thank es. you for participating. I know we have to get on, but this is what we're going to be doing, preparing you for that, okay? And so, we have a career closet that if you need clothes for professional dress, Okay, we will be getting with you when you come back to get your sizes and everything so we can do suits, yeah, suits, ties. How many guys know how to tie a tie? One or two? Know how. Okay, all right, don't know how. Don't know what a tie is? Okay, all right. So you want to make sure that we are getting you prepared. And so on this sheet, you have a barcode, that, a QR code that you can scan. That is the platform that we will be using for the QEP soft skills. I have three prizes for the first person that raised their hands that I can see you opened up the scan code. Go. Quickly, and raise your. It's in your page. It, it's on your sheet. En la en la página hay un código que deben de escanear y abran la aplicación. Los primeros tres personas que lo abran recibirán un premio. Levanten su mano cuando estén listos. Okay, all right, give those three prizes. And then um, what we're going to do is make sure also. Okay, vamos a hacer es asegurarnos. All right, so when you return, get ready for the competition among the sports, the competition among the Greeks, the competition among the class, uh, classifications that we'll be doing, okay? So I'm going to be introducing. Y'all give it up for, who's this lovely lady? Miss Rosa, give it up for Miss Rosa. <laughs> give it up for Mr. Lewis. Hello. Give it up for Mr. <laughs> and these two preacher men, thank you all so much. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Hester. Thank you so much, Dr. Hester. I want to make just a couple of announcements, please. If I may uh, announce a couple of things. Before we go to the screen, Dr. Keisha James sent me an announcement that I believe we need to make. April the 10th, 
2024, there is going from 2.30 to 4.30 in the fellowship hall, there is going to be a training for suicide pre prevention for college students. And uh, we know that suicide is the third leading cause of death among college age students. And so we want to encourage people to register. Um, we'll make sure that we send this out. Um, I did not get a chance to put it into the slides, but I want to make sure there's a QR code that you can scan and the registration uh, goes until April the 3rd. Uh, likewise, um, I want to announce um, that our that our investiture is coming. Amen. Can we get excited about that? The investiture for our president, Dr. Glenel M. Lee Pruitt, is going to be, the official day is, is March the 21st at 10 a.m. will be the investiture ceremony that's going to be in the Anthony Robinson Varsity Gymnasium. But I also want to add that the pre-investiture service is going to be that Wednesday night. I'm so excited because Dr. Pruitt was very clear that she wanted to have the students to participate in this. And so on that Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, uh, the Student Ministry Association, along with other students who would like to participate, will be, in fact, uh, conducting our pre-investiture service that Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock here in the chapel, here in the chapel sanctuary. And then, of course, that 10 a.m. service on uh, the investiture ceremony on Thursday, uh, at 10 a.m. and then 6 p.m. and evening with Madam President. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make sure that we support our president as we f do the formalization of this investiture. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a wonderful president, don't we? Yeah. I'm going to tell her y'all didn't clap. All right, all right, no. All right, listen, I want to say this to uh, Jarvis Christian University. Please, let's support and pray for our Muslim brothers and sisters as this Sunday. This Sunday, they will begin Ramadan. Um, Ramadan runs from March the 10th, 2024 to through April the 9th. I wanted to announce that because uh, this is a major sacrifice for those persons who practice uh, Islam. And I want our Islamic brothers and sisters to know that I stand with you uh, to support you as you are going through this particular religious um, experience. Uh, likewise, from the Office of Diversity, Circle K International, We'll have a meeting Wednesday, March the 6th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, Student Ministry Association will host the Wednesday evening worship experience here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. The Multicultural Student Organization will meet Thursday, March the 7th at 6 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. And then let me go ahead and put, ask you to mark your calendars, mark your calendars. Ladies and gentlemen, for two things. First and foremost, when we come back from spring break, it's Founders Week. It's Founders Week, and we are excited about our Founders Homecoming Week. Um, and, and then the week after that, March 25th through the 28th, will be our seventh annual International Week celebration. Can all of our international students please, please just take a minute, stand up. I want all our international students that are here right now, would you please stand up? Right quick, right quick, right quick. Come on, jump up, jump up, jump up, jump, jump up. It's a whole bunch of y'all looking at y'all. Why is y'all not getting up? Folks so hard-headed. Let, let me tell you why this is important. Let me tell you why this is important. That's okay. That's okay. Let me tell you why this is important because Jarvis is quickly becoming, quickly becoming more of an international community than it is a black community. Amen? And so we want to thank Mrs. Meeks for making sure that we celebrate our, our international community. Can y'all give God praise for Ms. Lin Mrs. Linda Meeks who worked so hard to make sure that our students are taken care of? Well, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, I want to um, introduce our speaker. I met Shaniqua Jones um, back, um, let's see, 1929, I believe, it was somewhere back there. No, we came to Jarvis together um, back in, in the fall of 88, I believe, and we graduated together in 1992. She earned her Bachelor of Science from Jarvis in uh, Mathematics, Minor in Computer Science, and went on to get her Master's Degree. She worked in motion pictures, and she's got a Master's in Entertainment Business. She's owner of Jack's Bloom LLC and di Operations Director in the YMCA of Fort Worth. I invited Shaniqua because when I was looking for some alums to speak at Jarvis, because I believe, Dr. McMillan, that it's important that the current students with Jarvis hear from former students of Jarvis 
so that you can, in fact, know that you can leave Jarvis and go find success. And the first person to respond to me was Evangelist Shaniqua Jones. And uh, she, 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 she actually has been canceled twice, <laughs> bless her heart. She's been canceled twice because of different circumstances. But when I called her this time and said, hey, would you come? She said, I'd be happy to get here. Now, the funny tip is, Dr. Preston, she has called me three times to say, am I still on? <laughs> am I still on? And so I'm excited today. Oh, by the way, she's a proud member, proud sister of Delta Sigma Theta Incorporated. And so after the choir comes to sing, we're going to, we're going to now hear from our speaker for this day, Evangelist Shaniqua Jones. How's everybody doing this morning? How's everybody doing this morning? Are y'all glad to be in the house of the Lord? Please give the Lord a great big hand clap. Come on, y'all. I'm a little excited today. I'm a little excited today because I'm, sure, I'm pretty sure you're used to seeing me or a few of us do solos, but today we have one of our new freshman students doing a solo, so I want y'all to welcome him. Please welcome Mr. Andrew while he come do this song for it. You better sing, boy. It makes no difference 
what you're going through. You're gonna make it. God's gonna see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. And this is another place. Need for less away. Let's give the choir another hand this morning. Okay, as y'all can tell, even with heels on, I'm a little height challenged, okay? So, first of all, I want y'all to know, I am happy to be back in Jarvis, okay? I am really happy to be back here. Second thing, this is not going to be your usual chapel service. Why? Because I'm your speaker, okay? Next thing, I'm going to take this out of here, and I've done basically memorize this whole thing right here. So I'll just come back when I need the reference point, okay? Y'all done read the um, scripture for me. Thank you, baby. Yeah, I need some interaction. That's what kind of teacher I was. I need interaction. I need y'all to talk to me, okay? Talk to me. Let me know that, you know, you, you're here for a reason. I mean, beside the fact, probably Dr. Cedric didn't probably, you know, threatened you with it in an inch of your life and y'all ain't gonna graduate ever and stuff like that. But you know, beside that, y'all are here for a reason today. And you know what that reason is? That reason is to hear the good news of Jesus, okay? And now, you know, I'm not gonna tell no story when Cedric and I were sitting up here, I was looking and I was like, whoo, Jesus, whoo, okay, Lord, you doing the daggone thing, you doing that thing. Then I was like, Lord, I hope I remember everything you said. He said, just open your mouth and I'll speak through you. How about that one? So all the ones, because I've been kind of scoping some of y'all out. I didn't get to scope y'all out because this big old podium was sitting there. But all this side over here and over here, y'all look like, uh, uh, she here. Okay, good. Can we go back? Can we go back to what we've been doing? Well, no, not yet. Hold on. But I want y'all to know something. 35 years ago, I was sitting just like you. 35 years ago, when I came to Jarvis, I came right after a very tumultuous year at my home. So when I left home, I literally was lost. I literally felt like didn't nobody or nothing love me, like me, want to hear from me or nothing, okay? So when I stand before you today, I'm not standing here telling y'all a bunch of fairy, get out the way, a bunch of fairy tales. I'm not telling y'all about what ifs. I'm not telling you about shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I'm telling you what I have lived, okay? And I want you all to understand that just because it looked like a bad situation right now, I promise you, you keep your hand in God's hand, it ain't going to be a bad situation always, okay? Now, I was kind of informed, informed of some things that go on here at Jarvis. And guess what? They've been going on here for 35 years. They were going on here when I was here. Hello, nothing new under the sun. Go read your Bible. Okay? Okay. Now, there's something else that I want you all to understand. That the reason I picked the scripture out of Judges is talking about Gideon. How many of y'all really know about Gideon? Beside the religion majors. Beside the religion majors. The really know about Gideon. All righty now. Yeah, okay. So, Gideon. Gideon was like like the most low down, lowest of the low. His tribe was like sub-zero low, okay? So with Gideon's tribe being sub-zero low, Gideon thought he was sub-zero, right? So with Gideon thinking he was sub-zero, he was down 
at the bottom of a wine press, press uh, thrashing wheat because the Midianites were like taking everything. I'm just like, like they get a dollar, the Midianites go, Psh. how many of y'all seen the cartoon where you get money, you just come and take it right at the same time? That's what, they, that's what the Midianites were doing. They were just taking money, taking money, taking money, taking money. And they couldn't believe it. And it was like, oh my God, what is going on? So today, I want to talk to you about God sees greatness in you. God sees greatness in you. There is greatness in you. Now, when you start talking about greatness, greatness is a noun. It's a quality of state of being in a large amount, extent, or importance. What do you think about when you have achieved greatness? What do you think about when you have personally achieved greatness? Do you have greatness inside of you? And I wanted, I wanted to know that Miss UNCF, where Mr. Jarvis and Miss Jarvis went, I don't know. But they have achieved greatness. And some of you all are probably thinking, I ain't never going to achieve nothing like that. I ain't never going to, you know, ain't nobody ever going to know my name. Ain't nobody ever going to see me. It doesn't matter if nobody sees you because guess who sees you? God sees you. God sees you through every single thing that you're going through. And I had just left my notes. <laughs> I want y'all to know that I am a proud person. But I'm even more proud of what God has done through me. Okay? And for everybody in the back who's got their head down, who's thinking, you know, she just up there just, just spitballing. No, no, no. I don't never spitball. Now, I may fight you. That was before, that was before Jesus, okay. But now, I'm going to tell you the truth, okay? When I was at Jarvis, I was at partly, probably one of my lowest points because there were a lot of emotional things going on. I've been at my lowest points the last 10 months because my parents died 12 days apart. One passed, my father passed on April 23rd, my mother passed May 5th. But God kept telling me, you're going to do something great. And I kept telling him, okay. And the thing about it was, what I told God in those moments when I was going through that, I told God, I trust you. I trust you. For anybody out there who's got trust issues, I want you to go back and think about how God has brought you through. What he's brought you through. How he's brought you through. Some of y'all were not supposed to even be in college. Some of you all were not supposed to make the bus, the train, the plane, the automobile that got you to this point. Some of you all thought, I ain't going to never be nothing. But look at where you are now. Especially for our international students. They done broke barriers by coming to a whole nother country. Come on now, give them a hand. I applaud you. <laughs> but we got to learn how to believe in Jesus. We got to learn that chapel is not a worrisome time that we got to just um, come to. We have to come here. No, we need to believe in here. We come to a Christian college, a Christian college, with a director who says, welcome in my Muslim brothers and sisters. We are welcoming. And the day I just came here, I had a whole other, I had a whole other set of notes in sermon and everything, but God then took this all the way to somewhere else. Because I've heard what's going on here. And I want you all to know there's, there's greater for you than that. There is so much greater. And the greater that you become in Jesus. Now, I'm going to ask some questions and when I ask these questions, don't say nothing. Answer them internally, okay? Now, how much time do you really spend with God? 
How much time do you actually give him thanks? How much time do you spend begging him to do something for you? That was a lot. I know that was a, that was a big one right there. Guess what? You ain't got to beg. You want to know why? Because you're already his child. You're already his child. Parents love their children, regardless of how warped it may be in some situations. They love their children. And if you had a corkscrew relationship with your parents, your heavenly father loves you more than anybody here on earth. And I'm going to tell you how much he loves you. How many of y'all filed income tax? Raise your hands. Or y'all still y'all mama's dependents? Because I was, my mama told me I was going to be her dependent until I graduated. And I was, too. So, so, yeah. So, true story. Last week, I had a bill that needed to be paid. So, I filed my income tax. And I was like, well, Lord, we're going to make it to the, we're going to make it to the day it hit the bank. We're going to make it. And I was like, Lord, you know that they say it's going to be on March 22nd. That was exactly a month from when I had put it in. And I was sitting there, and I'm like, okay, 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Guess what happened on the 25th, which was actually the third business day, because you know the IRS don't work on weekends. Bam. Hit my bank account. God supplied all my needs according to his riches in glory. So we have to look at Jesus in a different way. I had to learn how to look at God as the loving father. Some of us have been brought up in religion, and some of us have been brought up where God is just, he's just angry all the time. He's just mad at you. You breathe wrong, you're going to hell. You blink wrong, you're going to hell. God is not like that. God wants you to have a relationship with him. Just like you have relationships with people, places, and things, he wants you to have a relationship with him. And once you come into relationship and you cultivate that relationship, guess what? Your perspective changes. Your attitude changes. Your outlook changes. Your well-being changes. Your soul heals. There are a lot of things that we can go through that we don't even realize that we've been seared in our souls. That hurt us so bad that we didn't even realize that we was, like, hurt. But guess what? I know a God who is a healer. I know a God who sits high and looks low. I know a God who can fix anything. I know a God who can stop time and can make it all better. I know a God who can make up time and make up the passes of time and make sure that you, you, and you get everything that he deserves. But guess what? You got to surrender to him. And I know it's hard at this age. Because I, I, want, I was partying, and I wanted to take some libations, and the libations was good. But libations didn't get me nowhere. You know what got me to where I am today? Jesus. Because even when I was running from him, he was run, running to me. And he was waiting on me. So I'm not going to beat y'all up. I'm not, I, 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 I was going to go there, but I'm not. Praise the Lord. That's when you know you're growing in the spirit. Because, you know, you know you have something that you want to say. And the Holy Spirit be like, nope. You just go, okay. You, you go on about your business. But I want you all to know that you are in a great place right now. And you have a wonderful man directing y'all. And showing y'all what it's like. And I'm so proud that he takes time to remember us little people. Because if you haven't noticed, 
I'm one of those people who felt like I was insignificant. I was one of those people who felt like God wasn't going to use me. I was one of those people who felt like I wasn't seen by anybody. Nobody was going to ever do nothing. But God kept telling me, stay in your prayer closet. Stay on your face. Keep praying. Keep reading. Keep trusting. And when I say that God has done more for me in the last 10 months because my attitude, my perspective changed about who he is, baby, look at her. Y'all can't, y'all, look, I'm telling you, you can't lose when you use his stuff because he created all of this. So, as I end, I want to say thank you, Cedric, for bringing me in. Thank you to the faculty. I forgot to um, um, say thank you when I first started. Sorry. I was nervous. Okay. Um, also, uh, thank you to everybody who came today. And most of all, students. Students, students, students. Listen to me. And when I say this, hear my heart. There are a lot of things that go on at Jarvis that will propel you to the next, next level of your life. But there's one main thing that Jarvis does. It gives you the foundation to build on. And that firm foundation is Jesus. So students, please remember, if you don't remember nothing else today, please remember that Jesus loves you. And what my favorite catchphrase is, you are blessed and you are favored. Thank you. I, I want us to pray. I want to pray. Would you bow your heads with me now? I do want us to pray. Because I, I heard us say something several times in this particular presentation, and that is, that she said that she felt like she would never be nothing. Somebody sitting here right now, you may feel the same way. And I want us to understand just in this moment that God does in fact stand on the side of the people who feel like they're too small. God, would you cause us now today to hear this word? Thank you so much, God, that you spoke. And we pray, oh God, that you will, in fact, cause us, oh God, to see ourselves, not through the eyes of those who have hurt us, but to see ourselves as you see us. For you have said that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you give it up one more time, please, for, for Evangelist Shaniqua Jones. Receive now at this time Dr. Paul Liz, he plays our post loop.
Let us stand and sing together our alma mater, please. JCU, we love you. You can be none but great as we climb. God bless you. Be an idol of our state. Gold and blue, which we wear. You have worked truth. Just, just before I pronounce this benediction, number one, may I have your attention and then we'll go. Just before I pronounce this benediction, let me say to students, I know spring break is coming up next week. Please relax, have fun, but would y'all do us a favor, please be safe. Be safe. I am very serious when I say this and I know we're ready to go. Would y'all please be still just another moment. But ladies and gentlemen, every year it seems we come back from spring break and we get horrible news about something that has happened to our students. Would y'all please make wise decisions as you get ready to go. Receive now this benediction. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance on you. I will stop the benediction until y'all stop moving. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say this again. This is not just about, and I know people say, Dr. Mack, people said Dinkins did don't take all that. Yes, it does, because you cannot walk out of a meeting before your president or your boss or your supervisor says it's time to go. And part of what Jarvis is here to do is teach us what to do and how to do. Amen. And I love you enough to say don't do that. So now receive this benediction. The Lord bless you. And the Lord keep you. The Lord lift up the light of God's countenance on you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord grant you God's peace in your labor, your leisure, your laughter, your tears, your joys, as well as in your sorrows. May the love of God go with you every step of your journey. Amen. You are dismissed. <laughs>